हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू साइंटिफिक इन्वेस्टिंग एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल सो वी मेट वन मंथ बैक ऑन रियल स्टेट सेक्टर वीडियो एंड आई होप यू हैड लाइक दैट वीडियो इन केस आपने वो वीडियो नहीं देखा है तो इट्स देयर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स यू कैन चेक दैट वीडियो दैट इज़ ऑन हाउ टू यू नो एनालाइज रियल स्टेट सेक्टर एंड उस वीडियो के बाद मुझे बहुत सारी क्वेरीज आई एंड वन ऑफ द क्वेरी वॉज ऑन uh not one many of the queries were related to uh stock analysis in real estate sector so i got queries around can you analyze this particular company or what is your view on that company so i thought why not to make a video on uh dedicated to one company where we can analyze one company and because this sector is a little different uh, as you will appreciate first it's a cyclic sector यहाँ बिजनेसेस को कैसे एनालाइज करते हो ऑपरेशंस कैसे एनालाइज करते हो परफॉर्मेंस कैसे एनालाइज करते हो वैल्यूएशन कैसे एनालाइज करते हो सब थोड़ा बहुत डिफरेंट है कंपेयर टू अदर कंपनीज लाइक मेनी टाइम्स आई गेट रिप्लाइज लाइक इसका पी तो ज़्यादा है इसका पी कम है या फिर क्वार्टरली रिजल्ट अच्छा नहीं आया आई मीन देर लॉड ऑफ मिसकनसेप्शन एंड सम आई ट्राई टू क्लियर इन द रियल स्टेट वीडियो बट Uh, of course, given the time limitation, we discussed four use cases, but थोड़ा थोड़ा पाँच मिनट देखे सो आई थॉट लेट्स मेक अ डिटेल वीडियो टेकिंग वन ऑफ द कंपनी एज यूज केस एंड हैंस आई ट्राई टू पिक वन ऑफ द कंपनी विच इज ओबरॉय रियलिटी सो आपका नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन होगा कि ओबरॉय रियलिटी ही क्यों तो उसका भी रीज़न है एंड देर आर फ्यू रीजन्स फॉर दैट सबसे पहला रीज़न तो ये कि यू कैन नॉट एनालाइज एवरी कंपनी एंड स्पेशली इन रियल स्टेट Uh, analyzing one company is like analyzing five companies because real estate or infra as a sector hai ki jahan har company ke multiple projects chalte hain and you should have a very good sense on each of these projects so it's like in analyzing those individual projects so thoda ye challenging kaam hai apne aap mein isliye aap sari companies ko analyze nahi kar sakte you have to be selective and hence the principle of exclusion is becomes much more important सेकेंड साइक्लिक सेक्टर हो या नॉन साइक्लिक सेक्टर हो अगर कंपनी को ग्रो करना है तो यू नो बियॉन्ड दैट होल मोमेंटम प्ले और यू नो द सेक्टर एन अ प्ले द कंपनी नीड्स टू हैव सर्डन क्वालिटी एस्पेक्ट द प्रोमोटर नीड्स टू हैव सर्डन क्वालिटी एस्पेक्ट्स एंड द प्रोमोटर शुड हैव द एबिलिटी टू मेक द बेस्ट आउट ऑफ द गिवन मार्केट इन अ बुल रन फॉर दैट सेक्टर सो सम हाउ आई फील दिस कंपनी हैज सम ऑफ दोज इनग्रेडियंट्स एंड यूल सी वाई Uh, also if you see last 10 years me the whole sector didn't do well but this company uh, like most of the companies they have got corrected whereas this company is not corrected it has given some return even from 2000 you know 11 to 16 so kuch to aisa ho raha tha and uh, reading that i studied this company 3 years back for the first time so again a known devil is you know better than the unknown one so i had some idea of this company so when i saw the uh sector is making right kind of noise i thought why not to look at it and you know that is why i picked one this company as one of the four company in the use case and today we will see in much more detail so with that let's look at this uh company so few standard disclaimers uh this is not a stock uh, recommendation this is a educational research purposes so for any kind of investment do refer to your investment advisor uh we will use lot of data lot of third party data sources like tejori screener uh, we don't have any commercial interest in any of them and uh, we have divided this presentation into four five parts where we will first focus on introducing you to the company kya karti hai kya business hai क्या बिजनेस मॉडल है अगेन आपने रियल स्टेट के वीडियो में देखा होगा कि कितने तरीके से अलग अलग बिजनेस मॉडल हो सकता है रियल स्टेट कंपनीज का वी विल सी ऑल ऑफ दैट वी विल ट्राई टू नो लिटिल मोर अबाउट द प्रमोटर एंड देन वील गेट इन टू दी ओवरऑल डिटेल्ड ऑपरेशन ऑफ द कंपनी एंड फिनेंशियल्स ऑफ द कंपनी एंड ऑल एंड हाउ टू कनेक्ट फिनेंशियल्स एंड ऑपरेशन बिकॉज देर आर लॉट ऑफ मिसकनसेप्शन आई सी वेयर यू नो पीपल इन ट्राई टू इंटरप्रेट क्वार्टरली रिजल्ट इन अ मैनर इन विच इट शुड नॉट बी बेस्ड ऑन द नेचर ऑफ द ऑपरेशन एंड नेचर ऑफ फिनेंशियल्स सो हम वो सारा कुछ देखेंगे ऑपरेशन में एंड देन वील गेट इन टू द रिस्क एनालाइस वी विल गेट इन टू द अपॉर्चुनिटी एनालाइस एंड फाइनली वी विल सी द वैल्यूएशन की कैसे वैल्यूएट करते हैं कंपनीज को सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द कंपनी इंट्रोडक्शन so overall is a mumbai based uh, reality player and uh, it is present in multiple uh, real estate segments uh, but uh, most of the projects have been executed in mumbai whether it's the retail mall called obroy mall or it is the office space uh, called commerce or whether it's a hotel called westin 
And uh, if you see the topology of Mumbai, uh, most of their projects, uh, especially the commercial one, is more around that uh, Western Express Highway belt of near Goregaon and you know Malad Borivali side. Also, some of their upcoming projects are in the same area, like in Borivali, and then in Worli they have started some projects. Also, they are getting into Thane region. So these are some of the commercial or rental properties, and then these are the various real estate developments. If you see most of the projects executed in that Andheri to Borivali area. So uh, it's totally in Mumbai region as of now. Second and important thing, it is present in the premium high margin segment when it comes to residential. So if you see some of their projects, uh, and these are name of some of the ongoing projects, some of the completed projects, and if you see the rate per square foot of all these projects, they vary somewhere around 15,000 rupee per square foot to you know, 22,000. In fact, one of the early project is going in 40,000. So that is the kind of ticket size, uh, you know, they work on. Also, if you look at their EBITDA margin, they work almost in 50% EBITDA margin and 35% PAT margin, which is again a typical indication of a premium player. Uh, the other important thing uh, regarding Oberoi is it's a diversified player. And why diversification is important because real estate being a cyclic industry, both residential and commercial goes through its own business cycles. And having a diversified portfolio uh, in different dimensions always helps in you know times when some of the risks occur. So if you look at uh, Biroy, they, are, they have shopping mall, they have office space, they have hotel, they have residential apartment. <coughs> so the revenue is uh, pretty diversified. Hotel is a very small part of business, but shopping mall, office space. Uh, they have a decent contribution to profitability and uh, residential is significant in terms of revenue and also in terms of profitability. The other important thing is that this is important because uh, this is not something you will find in the real estate sector. I mean, 95% of the players will not have. And in fact, as I said, when I tried to include companies for my research, 95% of the company got excluded on the balance sheet strength criteria. And Oberoi being one of the exceptions. And if you look over the years, uh, Oberoi has always been cash positive or with minimal debt. Uh, rarely uh, they have taken debt when they have find those small windows of opportunities. And again, they have been able to clear that debt with the cash accruals because of the rental business, which throws a lot of free cash flows, which is increasing year after year. And that is why they have been able to increase their net worth also year after year. And it has been one of the few companies which has in real estate has gone up than going down since uh, you know FY10. Also, if you see in terms of debt equity ratio or interest coverage ratio or quick ratio, I mean whether it's about the short term, uh, you know, the uh, short term leverage or long term leverage, it it is a very pretty comfortable position which highlights the strength of the balance sheet and strength of the cash flow which is very unheard in a real estate sector. I know it's a bull market, you know, the sector is going through its best cycle. You will find a lot of companies becoming five and 10 bagger. And the, the key is if you are able to exit well and good, but lot of those companies which become five and 10 bagger, when the cycle turns, they also correct by 70, 80%. Uh, there are few companies which progress. Of course, it also depends on the valuation. But the companies which are strengthened by balance sheet, the companies which are strengthened by cash flows, they are the companies which survive beer cycles and they keep growing. Uh, and that is must. Uh, whereas 90% of the players which may become multi-bagger, they may not have that kind of you know balance sheet and cash flow strength to you know survive in beer markets. Uh, the other important aspect of this company is it's very design focused. And when I say design focused, it means uh, this is something which is their USP. And they have been pioneers in India to appoint some of the world-class design firms and design architects. Like Samsung uh, is like uh, one of the world uh, uh, well-known company when it engineering company, or uh, when it comes to designing the mall uh, recently for Borivali, they have hired one of the a uh, renowned uh, uh, architect called Binoy, which has been responsible for some of the best properties in London and Singapore. 
also most of their new projects these projects are lead certified uh, i don't know how many of you have heard about the lead certification but why it becomes relevant is uh, everybody talks of you know esg esg environmental social so lead is something which i believe has a you know a way of uh, identifying the kind of you know esg metric because how it helps us uh, it helps to track a lot of uh, things regarding the building uh, in terms of the energy conservation or energy consumption or the power consumption through sensor based uh, you know uh, analysis and that is where it helps to conserve water it is more eco friendly it is more environment friendly and you know this is something which adds again a level of premium to the property and uh, as i said the company works on 35% pat margin uh, and some of the projects uh, they work even on higher margin uh, which means to break even on some of the properties to break even in residential they need to do only 50% of sales and then the break even and then whatever more they are able to do they make profit so uh, yeah that's another thing and the last and uh, important point promoter driven so a uh, promoter holds 67% stake and there are a few unique things about the promoter which i would like to highlight uh, so first thing is uh, the best way to understand about the promoter is from promoter history what he has said what kind of statements he has made uh, what kind of execution he has done what other reputed people say about him in the market and if you see uh, uh he says he's not they believe he believes in having a a a strong balance sheet however he's not debt free and these are some of the statements which i have picked from different interviews or you know con calls and all where he says we do not choose debt as an option especially when you are building a company that should last its lifetime not your lifetime so keep the debt minimal which means he is not totally debt averse but he wants to take debt at the right time and uh, uh he says whatever land we buy we we will quickly get into development and not create a land bank so buying land and one of the major reason why lot of real estate companies have debt is because of uh, creating land banks uh, he believes more in buying land banks to quickly get into development rather than holding and hence also the motive is not to continuously get into debt uh, but only uh, when there is a right time and he says uh, a company is not averse to leverage how it wants to ensure that return on investment is good and project is secured by crystal clear cash flows and also uh, uh, he says we like to buy clean property from a good seller we do not buy want to buy expensive site and we do not want to buy sites competing our window of opportunity is small but we do get our opportunities occasionally so he is somebody who likes to say no most of the times but you know when there is a right time occasionally on a 5 year 6 year window he does his shopping and uh, i mean i could relate something like this with uh, you know the typical investor uh, you know mentality who wants to hit hard when you know there is blood on the street and i could see there is similar kind of mentality he is also having when it's about land parcels and in fact if you look at his history of last 20 years when he has gone and purchased land par parcels of land uh, that signifies the kind of statement he is making ma making here also there are a few more things about him which other people have said uh, so as i said about his land uh, you know land parcel buying his uh, his way of buying where you know he says no most of the time but there are few times when he goes aggressively when there is blood on the uh you know real estate street and he buys it and these are some of the examples how he did it at the right time also he has garnered uh, some uh you know praise worthy words from uh, stalwarts like deepak parekh uh, where he appreciated him for being one of the earliest companies in india to implement sap uh, sap or you know to appoint some of the leading international architects also in terms of growth where cash or you know debt is not a problem for him uh, for him uh, debt or equity it is available but he is in no hurry and why he is in no hurry you know you can uh, uh, make an educated guess now from the statements which he has made uh, so 
Uh, some of these things are based on his history, based on what other people have said. Uh, that gives uh, you know kind of impression what kind of promoters they are, what kind of show they are running, and what uh, investors should expect from such promoters. And uh, another noteworthy thing is he doesn't take a salary. So if you look at the salary, I think at least last three four years he has taken zero zero salary. So uh, he uh, he relies more on the dividend which he gets out of you know uh, the profit. And, uh, you know, so that was another important point regarding the promoter. So this finishes the overall company introduction. So for us, uh, studying every company or any sector, it's part of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a thought based organized, uh, you know, research exercise. And we do have certain training courses. So we have a fundamental analysis course uh, spanned across 30 hours where, you know, we write, start right from the scratch. Uh, teaching about the financials, the basic fundamentals of financials, uh, ability to identify wealth generating sectors and companies and how to look at quality aspect in a company, how to evaluate management in a company. We do look at a lot of, uh, you know, use cases, sector use cases, company use cases. Uh, we also leverage a lot of tools which have been built internally. Uh, you know, to leverage a uh, lot of database analysis and, you know, come to, you know, decision making capabilities, screeners and filters. So uh, you have the course syllabus in front of you do have a look in case you are interested. So let's get back to again, let's get back to the analysis. So, so now given uh, you are introduced to the company, you know, a little bit about the promoter, let's try to understand the business model of the company kya karti hai, and especially operations and uh, we will try to understand कि जो नंबर्स आप देखते हो इतना सेल्स हुआ इतना एरिया बुक्ट हुआ कभी क्वार्टरली रिजल्ट ऑल ऑफ सडन बहुत अच्छा आता है कभी बहुत खराब आता है लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड लेट्स ट्राई टू गेट अ होल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द ऑपरेशंस फाइनेंशियल्स एंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द ऑपरेशनल नंबर एंड द फाइनेंशियल नंबर सो नाउ let us लुक एट द ओवरऑल बिजनेस मॉडल एंड द ऑपरेशंस इन डिटेल so uh, company they have three year decade of history uh, in mumbai market they have finished almost 42 projects and uh, currently uh, you know almost 45 million square of area is under construction they have shopping mall which is a high margin high repetitive cash flow business and we will see in detail about these businesses they have office space which is again a high margin high repetitive cash flow business they have hotel business uh, the hotel business is not high margin, I'll just correct it. It's an average margin and average cash flow kind of business. And then there is a, uh, a residential business, which is one time sales based model in the premium housing. So if you see the business, it's a combination of repetitive cash flow generating businesses, as well as the one time sales business, which generates profit for them. So this is like the cash cow, which keeps on generating cash, which is deployed, which they deploy either on these businesses or on this business to create uh, new sources of revenue. Uh, in terms of the operations, so the key pillars of the overall business operation is uh, the land acquisition, the regulatory approval, the design and architecture, the overall execution, uh, the sales and marketing and project management. And there are certain uh, key, uh, you know, key pointers which I would like to highlight. So when it comes to land acquisition, we have seen they're not aggressive. Uh, they don't want to create land banks, but they want to have their shopping period when there is blood on the real estate street and they want to buy deals when the deals are favorable so that, you know, uh, it can generate better IRR. And they're flexible in the land acquisition strategy, whether it is regarding JV, or uh, you know outright purchase depending on you know the nature of transaction uh, also the focus is on the location and clear title and transparent acquisition uh, because these could surprise big time you know when things go out of order uh, if you see they have been in mumbai market for last 30 years which means and real estate is a market where the local know how of the you know of the uh, regulatory and legal framework, the bureaucratic framework, all of that is very, very important. So being in Mumbai and Mumbai being a bigger market and having three decades of experience gives them that deep understanding of, you know, the regulatory and legal framework of the Mumbai real estate market. Uh, designer architecture, so as uh, we have seen, 
uh, I think they are one of the few companies who are highly focused on design, having the world class designers, and uh, they have internal project man monitoring teams to ensure that you know the project is on budget, on execution, and uh, there are more developers. They don't uh, they don't have a you know big in house construction team. The construction is mostly outsourced to uh, some of the reputed international and domestic contractors. And there are more developers and project managers who manage the project. They are more focused on the you know design and execution. And then they outsource a lot of other work. And uh, they extensively use IT. So in real estate, they were pioneers in getting you know SAP enabled processes. Also, in terms of sales and marketing, uh, like any other real estate company, they are innovative, flexible. Uh, and uh, I mean, for me, the way I see is marketing has been mixed for them because there are certain projects which are really doing well. There are certain projects which have not done well. So it's a mixed bag, but uh, they have done a decent job. If you see relatively, they have done a quite a decent job, uh, you know, on the sales and marketing side. Uh, now, if we look at the business model and uh, if we see the kind of revenue contribution they have got, uh, combining all the various business types, and I'm aggregating uh, the mall and the office space business into rent and the hotel business into hospitality and the residential business into uh, projects. What you see is the rental business, which is the mall and office business. It has grown consistently in terms of revenue and uh, 21 have FY21 has been outlier year because of COVID. But if you see, they have consistently grown uh, almost, uh, you know, 4.5 times they have grown their uh, rental revenue in 10 years. Hospitality it has grown, but, you know, it has become stagnant and, uh, uh, you know, because again, uh, hotel is a cyclic industry. <laughs> If you see the residential business, they were locked in a revenue band for six, seven years between some 500 to 700, 600, 700 crores. And then they made a shift from that. And now they're somewhere between, you know, 1500 to 2000, uh, you know, crore revenue band. So uh, projects, which is residential has been non-linear business, uh, which was stuck in a band. And then it has gone into a 2X kind of band. Whereas the rental and uh, you know the repeatable cash flow business has been something which has been consistently growing, and as a result of that, the share of rent and hospitality, which is a repeatable cash flow business, it went from ten percent to almost thirty percent, but right now it is at seventeen percent. We will see why because you see there is a significant jump in this, whereas this has been growing at a, a you know consistent fifteen twenty percent rate, but there is a lot more to it, and we will see when we deal with the valuation. So what is clear is there is a rising share of non-project revenue, which is good because this kind of business is less cyclic. It is more consistent. It is more predictable. And hence, it may fetch a better valuation compared to residential. Uh, the other way is project residential is non-linear, we saw. And of late, there is a reduction in sales or a share of non-project revenue, and we will see that. So these are the numbers. Just have these numbers in your mind because we are going to revisit the slide again. And why I'm highlighting this is uh, a few days back, I made a tweet, a uh, story of my biggest wealth creation stocks. Pahle value ki khao, fir earnings ki khao, fir momentum ki khao. And how these sources of uh, wealth creating stocks are generated. Uh, one big source for me have has been hidden value where uh, what I mean by hidden value is uh, the market perceives the company as something, but after a few years, the company turns out to be something else. And to give an example, uh, in 2018, I made a presentation on one of the hospital companies called Apollo Hospital. And that was time when everybody was so averse to hospital because government was coming heavy on hospitals to decrease the margin and people were telling it's a socialist sector, let's not in, get into it, it's a capex heavy sector and whatnot. Uh, but the thing is many times what you see is not what is there or what you see might be there for that point of time. But the same thing, if you see five years, 10 years down the line, it might be totally different. And this is what I want to highlight with this image. And the case which I met at that point of time for Apollo was 
market is treating it as a hospital company but look at the business of pharmacy company and pharmacy is a retail business with more than 25% margin with you know very big market size opportunity where more than 90% of the market is uh, semi organized and organized what you say is the stand alone shops but not a corporate way of running it and look at the way this business is increasing compared to the hospital business how this is increasing so 10 years down the line will you call it a hospital company or will you call it a retail pharmacy company or you know now the stock has become 5x in last 3 4 years so now people are calling it a technology company because you know they have apps and healthcare has gone digital and what not but the point is 3 years back people were perceiving it as something different now they are perceiving it is like something different and 5 years down the line it might turn out to be you know something uh, much more bigger than what we have perceived but the idea is these are the kind of places uh, where the big money is made because not everybody realizes and my humble request don't run after companies which are super highly valued and everybody is talking about big wealth is creating by finding companies which is not being talked about or uh, where you know there is lot of pessimism momentum investing is good but you know you need to exit and that exit needs to be at the right time not every company will create wealth you will have 10 companies which will run for years and may become a hundred bagger but there will be hundreds of companies you know which will crash so if you have to really find value you have to find something which not everybody can appreciate and which is not visible in everybody's eyes uh so i'm just giving that uh, this perspective because even in oberoi there are little bit of flavors of that and i will come back to that but just remember this slide uh, about the uh, you know the repeatable predictive uh, predictable uh, cash flow generating business which is slowly and consistently growing and we'll come back to that and if you want to read more about apollo there is a blog on apollo hospital written 3 years back on my blog facts beyond numbers you can go and you can read about it there are ppts and all so again coming back to our reality so one more thing which i did is i have what i have done is uh because you know if you look at these companies the and real estate and sector year by year you know there will be a lot of you know uh, uh, you will not see a lot of uh, smoothness in numbers so what i have done is i try to do a three year average of all these numbers just to give a flavor of trend wise where it is going and if you see the rental business there is a continuous uptrend if you see the hospitality business is a peak and it is down and if you see the project which is residential business as i said it was stuck in a revenue band of 600 to 800 crores and then it has gone into exponential growth curve right from 800 to almost 1800 crore run rate on a year average basis and what we see is the rental revenue business is growing at a very good cagr 3 year 24% cagr 5 year 17% cagr 10 year 16% cagr very good numbers hospitality business stagnant 1% 1% 8% on 3 5 and 9 year cagr project revenue growth has been non linear but tremendous growth like almost 31% cagr on a 3 year basis 23% cagr on a 5 year basis and 10% cagr on a 10 year basis uh, which is very decent given the kind of uh, you know real estate market we had one of the worst uh, i mean we had a good uh, bear real estate market and many people think real estate bear market means prices will crash by 50% which may not happen in all the case uh, because india has a inflation of 6% if for 8 years prices don't increase basically it's a 50% reduction in price i mean i'm just simply multiplying 6 into 8 but the you know compounded effect might be more but what i want to highlight is that uh, we from since 2014 we had a very bad real estate market and still the company has grown and if you go back again to the chart why the company has done well compared to the sector and peers if you see these growth numbers this is one of the reason with a very strong balance sheet and cash flow and if i show you all the numbers like for the mall for the uh, first uh, business center second business center what you can see is this is a very high ebitda margin business almost 93 to 97% ebitda margin business and uh, they have been able to deploy their assets with 95% 96% in fact 99% occupancies and also some of the businesses they have been able to 
get more bang for the buck every year they have been able to increase their per square foot area which highlights their bargaining power at least in the mall not in the commercial space if you see the rates are fixed but when it comes to the mall uh, which is a more retail business where you know they can host 30 40 uh, retail companies uh, out of multiple companies they have the bargaining power because they have been able to increase the price or they have been able to do it at a very good location where the location has played to its advantage and if we summarize all these numbers what we see is if you look at the EBITDA and uh, you know given that uh, it's a relatively debt free company and all uh, the EBITDA to cash conversion is high because they don't disclose the uh, cash conversion at a project or you know at an asset level but it's a high EBITDA to cash flow conversion business. You can see the cash flows are increasing 232 crore EBITDA to 309 to 344. Of course, COVID year has been, you know, uh, a bad one, uh, but uh, they have done pretty well. And this is a repeatable free cash flow business. There is a, uh, the, the growth has come by two things, either by expansion or by per square foot hike, where the retail mall business, the growth has come from PSF hike, uh, in the commercial uh, office space business, the growth has come more by the expansion by getting into Commerce 2, uh, which was the new property. The other note, uh, noteworthy thing is malls have high PFS, PSF per square foot than office, uh, almost double than the office. And hotel is negligible share of business and uh, the revenue and the profit is more equally divided between the mall business and the overall office space business. Uh, now let's jump to the residential part. Now, the residential is something which is very, very different because commercial was more about cash flows and repeatability, some pricing power and all. Residential is more about taking a project, building for three years, in the process, doing the sales. And I'm just highlighting some of the you know projects they have built. And I mean, again, talking about design, just look at these beautiful buildings. Uh, so coming to residential, uh, Residential is something which is uh, very important to understand because uh, many times I see people, you know, asking ki is company ko kitna PE dena hai, uh, ya fir, uh, uh, iska revenue itna jada hai, ya fir quarterly result aega they will talk ki quarterly result to achha nahi aya, uh, they will compare year over year. <laughs> the biggest question they will have ki real estate company ko kaise evaluate kare because many years companies are in losses. Also, Many people don't understand how to evaluate the performance of a real estate company, which is into residential space. So what I will try to do is I will try to answer some of these critical questions. How do we know if a company is on right track or not? Or ya fir, wo operational numbers, what do they signify? Wo kya batate hai? Uh, the second important aspect, because I see there is a lot of disconnect. Uh, many of us don't know how to read financials of a residential real estate company uh, based on the kind of questions which is asked quarter after quarter during quarterly analysis or user disclosure. So question is how do we calculate the actual revenue and the potential revenue and how do we know if the project has or the company in real estate residential projects they have made profit or they have made loss. Also everybody talks about land banks, itna bhara hua land bank, ye hai, wo hai, itne million square foot ka project hai. Or फिर भी company कहीं भागती ही नहीं है। तो question is कि भैया opportunity size का है, where is the opportunity and how to analyze what is the opportunity and what a successful residential project or what a successful residential real estate investment opportunity from a investor stock market investor perspective looks like and how to evaluate it based on the operations and financial data. And the last but most important, how do we identify risks in a real estate company? Uh, because companies will always give rosy number. They will always try to predict everything is going good. But as an investor, we have to be aware of the risk. And it's very important to understand the risk. What is the risk? How to identify the risk? How to analyze the risk? What are the risks? And most of the analysis I have seen is people just look at PE and all this growth and bus ho gaya. But See, if you are a trader or if you are a technical analyst, of course, you can look at charts and you can have your entry and exit. But if you are a fundamental guy, you don't have excuse. You have to understand this and you have to go at a project level. The other thing I see people asking is, ki ye company ka analysis kar do, wo company ka analysis kar do. 
if you analyze real estate company the challenge is if the company is into 40 different project at least you have to analyze those companies which are significant contributor of revenue so you have to analyze those projects it is like analyzing 20 different companies project by project it's not so real estate and infra there are two such sectors where it's a project to project analysis and it takes time so again that is why one exclusion is more important than inclusion and second you cannot analyze all the companies so if you are really a fundamental guy you have to understand some of the few companies in well and you have to understand it well because bina risk ka kuch nahi aata sab mein risk hota hai if you know the risk in advance you will be saved else uh, you know the market will be cruel so now uh, how to analyze all this is what you need to do and if you get any kind of residential real estate company this is what you need to do have all the projects which are there so i have all the projects which oberoi is executed in real estate space ye sab aap chhod do because all these projects are almost completed and bulk of the sales has been done if you see 100% of the revenue has been recognized so i'll not look at this Just because दो चार फ्लैट बेचना बड़ पड़ा हुआ है थोड़ी छोटी सी इन्वेंट्री है, है लिस्ट में बट मैं इसको कंसिडर नहीं कर रहा एंड गिवन एज आई सेट यून दे डू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ सेल्स दे ब्रेक इवन विच मीन्स की यहाँ जितना प्रॉफिट बनना था मोस्टली बन चुका है दे आर नॉट दे शुड नॉट बी बॉर्ड अबाउट इट की ये कब बिकेगा एंड ऑल ठीक है नाउ लुक एट दीज प्रोजेक्ट दीज आर द प्रोजेक्ट विच आर आई दर वर्क इन प्रोग्रेस और द सेल्स सिग्निफिकेंट सेल्स इज नॉट हैपन इवन बिफोर दिस it is very important to understand the revenue recognition principle and again in my real estate video i have spoken about it company ka revenue recognition principle kya hai wo delivery dene pe revenue recognize karte hain ya project construction milestones pe revenue recognize karte hain and few it is important to know few things about oberoi so they have more a project completion based uh, revenue recognition principle but jab tak kisi project ka construction 25% khata uh, 25% construction ya 25% sales nahi hota hai uh, i will confirm but it is one of the two they don't recognize and when the, we say 25% it is not by count of flat it is by uh, the share of the uh, you know uh, area area sold so if a uh, project is of 1 lakh square foot when they sell 25000 square foot then only the revenue recognition start and then they have some uh, conservative accounting in principle where in the beginning they don't take the margin and uh, you know land cost and all so they follow even though it's a, a project completion approach there is some sense of conservative approach like i i, I like ashiana because ashiana has a delivery based approach and as i said ashiana ka quarterly result dekh ke kya kar loge har quarter to project deliver hone wala nahi hai तो दो साल में जब एक बड़ा प्रोजेक्ट डिलीवर होता है वो दो साल के आठ क्वार्टर का पूरा रेवेन्यू एक बार में रिकॉग्नाइज होता है तो आप उस प्रोजेक्ट का क्वार्टरली रेवेन्यू देख के क्या करोगे बट हाँ ओबेरॉय जैसी कंपनी में थोड़ा सेंस बनता है बिकॉज दे आर ए प्रोजेक्ट कंप्लीशन मेथड बट इसमें भी जो प्रोजेक्ट पच्चीस सेल नहीं हुआ है उसमें वो रिकॉग्नाइज नहीं करते तो यू सी मेनी प्रोजेक्ट की नहीं हुआ नहीं हुआ नहीं हुआ और एक बार में अच्छा खासा रेवेन्यू रिकॉग्नाइज हुआ सो दैट इज वन थिंग यू नीड टू टेक दीज फैक्टर्स इन माइंड now for each project you need to understand kya bech rahe hain what is the total area they are planning to sell so this is the estimated area which they plan to sell now isme aapko teen char cheezon ka khayal rakhna hai kitna hai estimated area jo bikna hai isme se kitna area book ho chuka hai book ka matlab hai ki somebody came and he has booked it that okay i am going to purchase this flat book doesn't mean he has paid the exact amount of the flat so let's say ki total estimated area 94 lakh square foot hai and let us say ki isme se 47% book ho chuka hai that means ki almost 44 lakh square foot book ho chuka hai but is 44 lakh square foot ka jo project value hai wo project value सात हजार एक सौ आठ करोड़ है विच इज ऑलमोस्ट सेवन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड करोर बट इट डजेंट मीन पीपल हुए बुक दे हैव पेड द होल सेवन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड करोर और द कंपनी हैज रिकॉग्नाइज द होल सेवन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड करोर सो वॉट हैपन्स इज द बुक अमाउंट एंड द बुक वैल्यू इज डिफरेंट सो इफ यू सी हियर 
44 lakh square foot is the booked area and the booked value is 7100 crore and then the remaining area is non booked okay and the non booked amount which is to be booked is 3692 crore and out of this 7108 crore they have recognized revenue for only 4131 crore which means they are yet to recognize almost 3000 crore so the booking has been done but either the money is yet to be collected and recognized or the money has been collected but not yet recognized in the books as revenue and same way for the second project also okay so this is something which is important to understand so when a project is doing well is hame do teen cheeze dekhni hai construction kitna hua hai aur booking kitni hui hai that is very very important let's say ki ek project ka construction 50% ho gaya hai lekin booking 100% ho chuki hai so that's a very good scenario because all company needs to do is finish the construction because sales ka to jhanjhat ja chuka hai I mean, if you are building something, you are putting a lot of money front end. Of course, you know, you are putting money in the beginning and then you collect money, you put that money. But if you are building and you are not able to sell it, then you will be in working capital because you have put money and you are not able to sell it, then you will be in working capital. And then you will go to the margin of working capital. So the best scenario is that you are building more rates, you are selling more fast rates. तो जब तक आपका कंस्ट्रक्शन खत्म होता है उससे पहले आप पूरा बेच के निकल चुके हो एंड द वर्स्ट सिनेरियो इज कि आपका कंस्ट्रक्शन चला जा रहा है लेकिन आप सेल कर ही नहीं पा रहे हो तो इफ यू सी द बुक्स ऑफ ओबेरॉय दे हैव ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ सिनेरियोस लाइक दिस एलसीएन हैज बीन अ वेरी सक्सेसफुल प्रोजेक्ट दे लॉन्च दिस प्रोजेक्ट इन जस्ट 1 ईयर बैक दे हैव डन ओनली 20% ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन बट दे हैव बीन एबल टू बुक 45% ऑफ द एरिया Uh, which means only 55% of the inventory is left. And if we take a typical time of three to four years of construction, you know, if you have to sell it in one year, then it will be easily sold in three years. That is the thing. And then this is that they have, they have booked it for almost 991 crore, but the revenue recognized has been only 52 crore. Why? Because maybe ki ye jo 25% of the last quarter may cross kiya hoga and that is why. So you see, and the second thing is people may not have paid all the amount because, you know, their construction link plans and all of that. So, you know, the amount will come slowly plus the accounting rules and all. And yet they have to recognize almost 939 crore of revenue because the age of 55 percent is being sold. See, these numbers can have 2 percent, 3 percent deviation because there is a lot of assumption and calculation which I have built in building these numbers. But the idea is to show you how to do a residential real estate company evaluation, how to do a project analysis, how to identify if everything is going on or not. So if you see the total non-booked revenue potential is 11.98 crore for this 55%. The recognized revenue is 52 crore. The non-recognized revenue is 9.91 minus 52, 9.39 crore. So this is something which is yet to be recognized and this is something which is yet to be booked. So basically their total revenue potential is booked plus non-booked, which is 1198 plus 991, 2137 crore. This is a 45% book, 55% book has not been revenue share. And in book, revenue recognized hardly 5% revenue recognized, where 95% is recognized, which will flow as in next you know, one or two or three years. And if you see the share of this project in total potential revenue of Oberoi in residential books, this is almost one fifth, which is significant. And totally they have 349 flats and they started in FY21 and they almost sold 154 flats, which means the annual run rate of selling flat is around 154. And they're left with 195 flats to sell, which means if they sell at the same run rate within 1.3 years, they will be able to sell the whole project and when they do break even, so they break even. Uh, so uh, what is the break even sales? So the break even sales to do the break even sales, they need to sell uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, 73 flats more because when they sell, uh, you know, 73 flats, uh, uh, 
they will be able to break even i have i have tried to be little more conservative and i have tried to go little you know beyond 50% and take a uh, little more conservative number so itna big chuka hai plus itna around 220 i am assuming out of 350 when they sell around 220 numbers they will break even so if you see the time taken for break even sales that will be much lower hardly you know सिक्स uh, मंथ्स में वो ब्रेक इवन कर जाएंगे वेर एज गिवन द प्रोजेक्ट स्टार्टेड वन ईयर बैक दे मच टाइम सो देर मट मच अहेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ दर शेड्यूल वेर एज लेट मी टेक अनदर प्रोजेक्ट कॉल इटर्निया नाउ इटर्निया इज समथिंग विच स्टार्टेड टू थ्री ईयर टू ईयर्स बैक एंड देव बीन कंस्ट्रक्टिंग ऑलमोस्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स बैक एंड देव डन सिक्सटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द कंस्ट्रक्शन बट सी सो फार दे हैव बीन एबल टू गेट ओनली थर्टी सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ एरिया बुक्ड एंड still there is a 65% inventory and despite of being three year old project fy21 may be they have to sell almost 1300 units and they have sold in one year only 60 units and total they have sold only 473 units still more than almost double is unsold so if we if they sell at the same rate it will take them 14 years to sell the whole project and even if they have to reach at a break even level they have to sell 369 more flat which means it will take them almost 6 years whereas in 67% kaam khatam ho chuka hai agle 1.5 saal 1.5 saal mein pura project khatam kar denge which means agar ye apna sell rate nahi badhate hain to unko project khatam karega to 5 saal lagega break even tak hi pahunchne mein so this is a very very bad scenario and they have not done well in muldoon market they came in muldoon with these two projects uh, these are mid size projects i think between you know 2 to 4 crores these are 3 and 4 bhk apartments they have not done well Uh, they are really struggling, and this is like something which really needs to be monitored. And one feedback which I got is Mulund is more of a cash market. Uh, mostly businessmen हैं जो cash में pay करना चाहते हैं and uh, the kind of competition they have there in terms of cash payment and all that has become an issue. They have done really well in Andheri market, Borivali market, uh, but Mulund is something where they are they are uh, struggling. and again a concern because i don't want to highlight a promoter only in you know all the good things uh, but something which i didn't like is and it's not about promoter being good or bad i think it's more about the basic nature of the person uh, he has always been optimistic giving uh, reasons on ye hoga wo hoga it looks like from his uh, angle that things will do well uh, even for these projects they have come up with different kind of you know sales schemes and all but despite of all that whatever you read his comments on the you know uh on eterni and enigma the performance has been below par so again my, i would take his words with a little bit of caution because uh he might be optimistic person to see but uh, you know somehow things have not worked uh, as per the level of optimism in these two projects and given this project contributes almost 1/4 of the residential sales it becomes important and when i'm telling all this i am uh, not considering 36 west because 36 west is a project it worthy uh, it's a very premium project jahan ek flat almost 36 crore ka hai the second thing it's a project where there is a in residential there is a 25 to 40% share of the royal hold and rest of the share somebody else is going to hold it's a project where it's a mix of residential and commercial ritz carlton is entering in india first time and this is a kind of project where there will be a hotel created and there is a mall and there are a lot of things planned and things have not gone as per the best of the plan so i have just you know i am considering this more as a conservative optionality and you know i mean i am not considering all the rosy scenarios like i have not even considered the commercial side of it in my valuation and all and even in residential i am treating it separately because of the complications of diff being different type of project or share structure so excluding this this is again critical because this one fourth of the project 23% in right so this is how you analyze all these projects this is how you analyze ki project time pe hai ya nahi hai ek to break even karne mein kitna time lagega versus sales agar sales se kam period mein construction se kam period mein break even ho jata hai then you are good zyada mein hota hai to fir it is not a good situation aur jitna delay hoga utna kharab situation hai so accordingly i put my comments and then you also know ki kitna recognize ho gaya hai revenue kitna recognize hona baki hai let us assume if they are able to do the sales in next 3 years so what is the scope of revenue for them to be recognized and all of that so you can see almost 3600 uh, crore is there to be recognized so with that uh, we will jump next section uh, risk and opportunities 
So whenever we do a company analysis, uh, we have a, a very strong focus on risk identification. Uh, because in bull market, you know, stories may work, but you know, when the hard time comes, it is the understanding of risk which uh, helps to the conviction, both in terms of holding a stock as well as if a stock needs an exit. Uh, because having a sense of risk identification and risk awareness ensures that uh, we are ahead, uh, you know, of others in terms of, you know either having our conviction or pressing the sell button at the right time. So let us look at some of the key risks which are there with the company and then we will look at the opportunities. So we are in equity markets and uh, nothing comes without risk and concern and this business may be risks and concerns and some of the risks and concerns which comes to my mind I have highlighted. Like what if some of the key projects fail to underperform and given there is a concentration risk and I showed you in one of the example, what if, or, you know, some kind of, you know, unknown kind of scenario, like what if Mumbai loses charm? I mean, uh, I don't know if you have read, uh, there is an IT report which says that by 2050, Mumbai may see the level of CEA, I don't know whether that will happen or not, but I'm just trying to give certain scenarios of you know, unexpected risks which can come or what if the reality demand shift to Navi Mumbai given Averroi is more of, a, you know, proper Mumbai based player, though, you know, nothing stops them and actually they're getting into Thani big time. In fact, some of the kind of risks of the shift which looked logical to me when somebody told, I did a little bit of analysis and uh, let me show you. So one of the things which I came to know was that in Navi Mumbai mein airport aara and when the airport came, the whole demand will shift and people will shift. Shif ho but I did some analysis based on how the airport ka traffic historically has increased, uh, how is the traffic supposed to come. This is the main Mumbai ka airport, hai. supply to is Navi Mumbai will come in 3-4 phases. Mein and then what is the construction plan and when you add supply one and supply two and the demand by which the traffic is increasing still it doesn't one it doesn't look like ki mumbai airport ki zarurat nahi hai ye dono milke bhi us supply ko pura nahi kar payenge shayad by 2036 which looks like ki unko fir se uh, kahi airport expand karna hoga so i didn't see this as a challenge the other thing was a trans harbor link project again i don't know how many of you know the topology of mumbai uh, but this is your South Mumbai and uh, uh, this is the area which is you go through Navi Mumbai and this uh, Navashiva is more of the port area. And right now to go from this area, all of this Vadara Chembur, uh, there is a longer route like you, you know, to go to, uh, you know, uh, South Bombay. So I'm sorry, this is the your Navashiva area and this is your South Bombay. And uh, this is where is your uh, Bandra and if you go further, you get all that Tandheri and Jogeshwari and Borivali where, you know, Oberoi is present and they're coming in Thane side, which is here. So if the, this Trans Harbor link comes, instead of traveling from here to here, you can directly travel from here to here. But again, I don't see it as a major risk because nothing stops Oberoi, even if, you know, there is a demand shift of real estate, nothing stops them to shift from this area to Navi Mumbai or a Thane area. Of course, they will have to, uh, you know, buy land parcel and do all that. But I, I see more this as a commercial, uh, commercially benefiting than something which will highly, uh, you know, impact these areas because you know the belt which in which uh, Oberoi is present is more around this side than this side. So I, I don't see some of these as risk, but uh, we need to monitor. Uh, of course, any kind of economic slowdown is a risk. Any kind of, you know, regulatory change could be a risk. Uh, we have seen some of the premium properties. They have not been able to sell it at the same rate at which, you know, they have been able to sell some other properties. Uh, Oberoi Mall, maybe it was a location success. Can they repeat the same kind of success in the Borivali Mall? So these are open risks where, you know, it may play well, it may not play. Uh, so considering all of this, I think the cyclic industry is a risk, especially in the residential side, the regulatory policy around the taxation around the FSI and all these are risks. Uh, there are micro market risks like, you know, they have uh, not been able to sell properly in Mulund. Uh, then there is a geography and project based risk because 
if anything bad happens to mumbai market or projects where you know they have significant exposure if they don't do well you know they may not be able to achieve same level of profitability the lifestyle changes post covid world in terms of uh, whether it will be work from home or it will be more same office space requirement uh, those thing might have an impact on their cash flow and their expansion plan on the office space uh, uh, and also i mean uh, promoter has been optimistic about some of the properties but uh, all said and done they have not been able to you know achieve the kind of desired sales uh, run rate they needed to have so these are some of the risks which we need to be cognizant of but uh, you know uh, risk hai to risk hai and basically opportunity bhi hai so there is opportunity to look in this company uh, so whatever we saw that is more about the past and the present so the question is what about the future and why the valuation of course there is a present component in the valuation but there is also a future component so i'm highlighting some of the opportunities and then we will see the valuation so one they have one more mall coming in borivali and this mall is going to be the bigger one uh, 1.5 like lakh square foot and uh, in fact inox did the deal where you know they have taken 1 million square foot of the space uh, that just happened before covid so that that could be another potential cash flow generator and mall business if it does well and they get the pricing power right i think this is one of the best businesses uh you know given they have not uh, uh, the project irr is decent and they have not spent a lot on the land uh, with respect to the profit they will generate also in the office space they are going to come up with their biggest uh, expansion which is commerce 3 after 1 and 2 which is a 2.3 million square foot uh, leasable office and again they have done a tie up with uh, one of the financial services global companies uh worley as i said it's going to be a mix of <coughs> residential and commercial and i have not taken anything into commercial into consideration but the plan uh, it has not gone exactly as per plan so i am still in wait wait and watch mode to see and then factor in the valuation then they are coming up with project in thane which is more around the lines of not exactly affordable but still you know not like premium but a mass scale project and the work is going on still in planning phase i don't think they have opened it up for sales and then there is a redevelopment opportunity they are exploring in the mumbai market they are they have already built certain schools there is some more social infrastructure plan so some of the things i am not taken into consideration because uh, there is not much of clarity in terms of financial numbers but some of them yes there has been a significant progress and we will see the numbers coming so as i said the valuation of real estate sector is little different given it's a cyclic sector and especially different kind of companies have different kind of revenue mix and as you saw abroy has a revenue mix which is spread across commercial residential repetitive cash flow based business one time project sales based business so let us see how to if we have to evaluate this company how to evaluate and take this as a similar use case whether you get any real estate company which is more into commercial business or more into residential business so this will act as a framework of you know doing your valuation exercise that let's look at the valuation and because now uh, you know that the residential business is a very different business in terms of financial economics uh, very different in terms of cyclicity very different in terms of the risk and uncertainty compared to commercial so what i have tried to do is i have tried to do the valuation for separately for residential and commercial also to give you a flavor of how to think about valuation and then you know separately do it and then one more valuation where i'll try to bring everything together so now if you look at the residential the total to be recognized revenue opportunity if you see you have almost 6000 crores to be booked here and yet 3600 is to be recognized and all these projects are some of all the open projects which are under construction which should get constructed in next 1 to 3 years ideally if they are able to sell everything ideally they should sell almost 9500 crore of project in next 3 years 
and for 36 west i have, they say that 25 to 40 percent share based on different tower and all but i have taken a 30 percent revenue share uh, and you know everything so given they have almost pending revenue potential from current project itself of 9500 crore i have taken two three scenarios this is the best case scenario where they are able to sell the whole thing in three year, which looks highly uncertain seeing how Mulund and all is doing, which is 3,167 crore annual revenue. Let us say if they're able to sell in five year, it becomes almost 1,900 crore revenue per year. I am not including any new project opportunity, which is going to come in next year, like Thane and all. And then there's a current year run rate. So this is the annual sales of each of the current project. If they can maintain this run rate, then they will be able to do almost 2,500 crore revenue per year. Now, this is the kind of revenue they generate on a per year basis. Okay. So if you see uh, what I have done is I have taken this revenue rate and then they work on 35% margin, which is a uh, you know, number which is established from last five to 10 years of data. So assuming with these different kind of annual revenue run rate scenarios, if they are able to generate 35% PAT margin, and then if they get up on that PAT, they get a 10X PAT multiple, 15X PAT multiple, 20X PAT multiple, based on current run rate, three year and five year run rate, this is the kind of valuation they will generate which ultimately, if we take an average of all of this, this is almost a 13,000 crore of valuation. So the current valuation for the residential business I have come up with is around 13,000 crore. And currently it's trading at a market cap of uh, 28,000 crore. And when I presented almost two to three years back, it was around, I think 13,000 market cap, which was like, as good as valuation of the residential business right now. Now let us look at commercial. So you can see that uh, they have been able to grow the commercial revenue profit at a decent rate. We saw, you know, 15, 16, 23% revenue at a, uh, at a, you know, three, five, 10 year level. Now let us say they are able to identify and deploy this revenue at a 15% uh, level, which means if they have this 344 crore annually generated again i'm ignoring the covid year uh, let us assume if uh, beta is equal to your cash profit let us say if they have 344 crore of profit and they redeploy this money and this newly deployed money generates 15 percent profit for them which is almost around 50 crore of profit let's say that is my assumption because uh you know you go through the numbers you realize ki real estate ka uh, 8% ka growth rate hai, itna billion se, utna billion ho jayega, ye ho jayega. So if the company is one of the strongest company generating cash flow, they should be able to do it. So I'm taking also these kind of rental businesses. They don't stay stagnant. There is some kind of inflation clause. Jaan har teen saal pe aapka 3% per annum se thoda baat, wo, uh, per square foot uh, area badta hai. So I've taken that number as 2%. And again, from a valuation perspective, the EBITDA, because this is a, a repeated cash flow business, more predictable, less cyclic. I'm giving a beta level, three scenarios, 10x, 15x, 20x. So, this is your current beta 344, ka hai, assuming that COVID is all normal. Ho gaya. You take this number and then you grow profit at 15% because you deploy the money somewhere and, and then inflation. After 10 years, your beta will be around 1600 crore. Yes, it can happen or not happen, it all depends on management. There are malls which have been built and the malls gone bankrupt because the crowd has come. That has happened a lot in the Gurgaon, you know, they were SRS mall and whatnot. So a lot depends on the management, the execution capability. I'm assuming that, you know, the way they have performed in the last 10 years, if they're able to perform in the same way, whether in Mumbai, outside Mumbai, doesn't matter. But this is how they will grow. And then if you take uh, the three scenarios, sorry, this is one, two, three, 10 X, 15 X, 20 X. This could be the valuation of the commercial business. So after 10 years, if you take a medium scenario, 25, 25,000 crore becomes the market cap of commercial business, which is actually the current market cap. And if you take 13 crore of residential business and, uh, you know, almost 13 crore of this commercial business after five years, after five years, like will be like totally justified the current growth. So basically, uh, you are taking the current projects and 
in this approach, you are taking almost five years of growth of this business. And after five years, you know, if they keep on performing and, you know, they can keep on growing, you can say that everything for the future is what you are going to get or whatever multiple you give. This is just another way of looking at it, how much you are paying and, you know, all. But if we have to really evaluate the business, what I have done is, so I have taken all these businesses, the mall business, commerce business, and whatever business we have visibility, like whatever is coming in next two years, like the Buri Wali Mall or the Commerce 3, I have not yet taken, uh, you know, the the Wali commercial business. Also, I have taken only FY23 sales as FY20 sales, which was the, you know, pre-COVID sales, assuming nothing will happen in next three years, no growth, nothing. So there is a lot of conservatism built here. And then I have taken those margins and all, and then the multiple only 10 and 15, no optimistic scenario of 20, conservative scenario of 10 and, you know, the normal scenario of 15. This will be like FY23 valuation. And uh, if we add all of this, the numbers are in front of you. So you get somewhere around almost 5,000 crores, 5,500, 9,500, 14,500, uh, and your nine crores, which is around uh, 9,000 crores. So almost 24,000 crore. So 24,000 crore is the current valuation based on all of this. Whereas the current valuation is around 27, 28,000 crore after the recent run up. And two years back, the same business was available around 13, 14,000 crore. And when you see the valuation breakup, your mall is like 9% of the valuation. Bori Valley Mall is these new, these two new properties, see, almost they're going to contribute 45% of the valuation. So a lot of run rate, uh, run up in price might be because of, you know, these properties, the chances of coming live and, you know, that was not baked in. And slowly you will see the share of residential will go down. Uh, right now, if you see, we are at a 13,000 crore valuation, but my sense is as they progress and they put more money into repeatable kind of business, the share of residential will come down because the residential is highly cyclic. I mean, they have gone at a 2,000, 3,000 crore run rate, but I don't know how sustainable that will be but this looks more sustainable. So this is how there is no perfect way of doing valuation, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of how to do valuation, how to look at two different approaches uh, from a timeline perspective, from a growth perspective, from a residential perspective, from a commercial perspective. So uh, this is uh, about it. Now, a little bit of technical analysis. So uh, this is a weekly chart of last 10 years. And as I said, this has been on the few stocks which has grown up rather than going down, you know, you know, when the, all the real estate companies suffered and 615 used to be a very big resistance. It tried to cross in 2018, 2019, it couldn't. And then recently it has crossed uh, and this is like a lifetime high and lifetime resistance crossed and all of that, what you hear when companies cross their lifetime resistance and the business is doing well with very high set of volume, it is supposed to do well and it is doing well. Uh, when it didn't do well, the 324 acted as a major support during COVID, which was again, multi-time resistance and the same multi-time resistance came up as the support. And when I made the presentation, I had made the presentation two years back somewhere here. So since here I have been tracking this company. So if you see the daily chart, then again at a daily chart level, uh, the stock is in an uptrend. And if we can draw a trend line, you know, these nines connect and these have been the support points. So if you can extend this line, even if it falls, either you will get a support here or you'll get a support around 615 or maybe somewhere, you know, this line will touch and the correction will happen. And again, on a daily chart level, you can see typical price volume action, very high green volume bars, uh, you know, when the price went up and then, you know, very low volume bars during correction and, you know, it is happening. The RSI is also in favor. It's in strong momentum and all. Uh, in terms of the uh, overall, uh, you know, the flow of the money, promoters, they hold almost 68% of the company. But what is significant is almost 29 to 30% of the position is held by institutional investors, which means 98% of the company is in hand of institutional investors and promoter. And if you look at the stake of uh, retail individual less than one lakh, hardly 1.5%. Uh, 
So there's not a story which is very popular. Everybody owns and, uh, you know, when the market doesn't perform, you know, companies don't perform, these things are not important. But, you know, in a bull market, when the company is doing well, stock is cornered, a lot of these things make sense from a six month to 12 month perspective. So from that money flow perspective, this is something which is worth uh, noting down. I wanted to highlight. We have much better clarity in terms of if you have company to analyze in the real estate sector, then how do you do and you know given there are a lot of companies one person cannot cover all the companies but now given you have the framework i would request you go and you analyze some of the companies you are interested and in, you know do share your findings or your reports or your videos with us uh, because you know together we learn and together we prosper so i'll see you soon in the next video uh, in fact uh, we plan to release one more video this month which is on a different angle it's more on the quant side and all because you know there's a lot of buzzword around Quants investing, momentum investing, factor investing, and बहुत लोगों को ये समझ में नहीं आता कि मतलब ये सब है क्या, एक दूसरे में क्या difference है, how did they originate, how to think about it. So we will try to cover and give a perspective on some of those, starting with the very basics. So I will see you in the next video and. Uh...